Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a login slash authentication application using Python Django in the backend and React.js in the frontend. This is not the first video in this series, in fact we've already done 12 before in which we focused on setup, registering users, securing our APIs and many other things. In this video we're going to continue and we're going to be focusing on logout functionality so that users can use a button to log out of our app and make sure that all of the tokens that they've been using are deleted. And to realize this functionality, we're going to be focusing on five main steps. The first thing we're going to do is discuss the different options for logging out, because there are multiple ways to do it and multiple APIs from Django REST Nox. Next, we're going to slightly restructure the URLs in our application backend so it becomes a little bit more clear on the options that we have. And I'm going to tell you how these logout URLs actually work. Then we're going to make some changes to our front end and we're going to add a menu item on our navigation menu so that the user can click it and log out. And as the last step, we're going to create a function that actually logs out the user and deletes the token that they have from both the local storage and also our backend database. So let's start with an explanation of the options that we have for logging out the users. During this tutorial series, we've been using Django REST Nox for registering and logging in users. And when we go to the URLs part of the documentation, you can see that Django Nox provides us with three main URLs. The first one is the login view, uh, which is located at API slash off slash login. And this is the one that we've used to create the logging functionality. But next to that, there are actually two URLs available that you can use to log out users. And that one is API slash off slash logout, which uses Nox's logout view. But we also have API slash off slash logout all. Uh, and this one is actually linked to the logout all view. So let's take a look at what actually the differences are between these two options and discuss which one we can use. So if we go to the views section of this documentation and we scroll a little bit down, we have an explanation of what the logout view and the logout all view actually do. So you can see that for the logout view that it responds to uh, Django Nox token authentication and on a successful request, the token used to authenticate is deleted from the system. So what it does, um, we send a request to that URL and automatically the token attached to that request will be deleted from our database so that we can no longer make requests with that token. Now we also have another option right here, which is called logout all view. And what this one does is very similar, but actually it does not only delete the token uh, that we used to authenticate, but it's going to delete all the other tokens registered to the same user. So this is going to basically log out of all devices. And that is the difference between these two. Now, both these views actually work in the same way. You can see that the view accepts a post request with an empty body, so no information is required. We only need to make the request with the token to the URL that is in the documentation, and based on that, it should log out. And that is going to be the same thing for the logout all view. Um, so no matter which one of these options you pick, the implementation is going to be exactly the same. The only difference is the link that we need to send the request to. And in this video, I'm going to show you both options and also examples of what they actually do. So with this explanation out of the way, we can actually get started on making some changes. And the first things that we're going to change is actually change the URLs a little bit from the Nox URLs. Because if we go to the documentation, you can see that we can have these URLs specified like this, where we include all of the different URLs. But if I look at the authentication nox.auth, you can also see that you can specify them separately. And that is specifically useful when you customize the login view. And that is exactly what we have done. So I'm going to list down the logout and the logout all functionality separately from each other uh, and don't include them into one statement. So I'm just going to copy over this statement from the documentation right here. And inside of our code, we're gonna go to auth and then the urls.py file. And you can see that at this moment, we have specified a path where we include the nox.urls, um, which gets all of the URLs from nox. But now we're just going to uh, list them out separately, just to make sure that it's a little bit uh, easier to see. So I'm just going to temporarily copy over the URLs from documentation, which are in a little bit of a different structure, but let's correct that. 
So I'm going to copy over this path twice. And we're first going to make one specifically for logout, which is located at the logout extension. And then after that, we can change this one and make sure that it reflects to nox underscore views dot logout view as view with the name of Lox logout. Like this. And then we can do exactly the same for this one where we have logout all. And then instead of the include users.urls, we're going to make sure that this refers to Nox views that log out all view. And now we can delete the original ones. Now the only thing that we are missing right now is an import, because in the documentation we can clearly see that it does from Nox import views as Nox views. So we're also going to take that part of the code and use it on the top here in our URLs. Uh, and this should make sure that we don't have any errors there anymore. So let's start the front end and the back end server now from our local computer and check out what we need to change to make sure that the user can log out. Okay, so for the back end, we're going to cd into our back end folder and we're going to do venv slash scripts slash activate so that we are in our virtual environment. And then we do python manage.py run server to start our server. And we also create a new terminal right here and go into CD of the front end, which makes sure that we go to the front end folder. And then we can start our front end by doing npm run dev like this. And this starts our front end server. So this now should all be up and running. And when we go to our browser and go to our front end URL, we can now log into our application. And if we do that for email at email.com with testing 321, we can log in and hopefully go to the home page right here. Now what we want to do from the front end side of things is create a new menu item right here, which has the text of logout. And when we click on it, we want to send a request to the backend that logs out the user and deletes the token. And we also want to delete the token from our local storage. If we go to inspect and then to application right here, you can see that currently our token is stored in the local storage. And after we have deleted the token from our database, we also want to delete it from here uh, so that we don't use this for any requests or anything like that. And then we want to navigate to the home page again, which will also happen by default due to our protected routes. But just to be sure, we're going to put in a navigate statement to go back to the home page. So let's start with the first item on the list, which is creating a new menu item in our navigation menu. And we can do that by going to front end, to source, components, and then our navbar.jsx file. And in there, I'm just going to copy over this statement right here from our about navigation menu. And I'm going to give this one um, a new key. And also the about one can have a key of two. And then this one can have a key of three. And inside of the new menu item, we're going to start by deleting uh, this component as a link. We're also going to delete the uh, two because this link is not actually going to go anywhere. Uh, and we're also going to delete the selected part. Now, as the text, I want to have logout like this. Um, and the last thing that we also would like to change is the icon, because right now we have an info icon uh, right here. But we actually want this to reflect something uh, that is similar to logout. And to find a nice new icon, we can go to the Material UI documentation on the Material icons. And in there, we can find something suitable for logging out the users. So we're going to go down a little bit. And in here, I'm just going to type in logout. And we're going to get this one right here because it looks quite nice. And by clicking it, we can copy it over, go to our code and go to the top. And then we can copy over the logout icon text and put that inside of our list item icon like this. And now let's check what we see in the front end. And we now see a new item called logout with our new icon. And the next thing that we now need to do is create the logic for what needs to happen when we click that. And then make sure that when we click it, that that logic is actually applied. So now that we have a navigation menu item right here, let's create the logic in our navbar.jsx file for logging out an actual user. And we're going to start on the top by making some imports. Because the first thing that we're going to be importing is our Axios instance, uh, which helps us with making requests to our backend using Axios. 
And this one also includes the uh, token that we need to provide to the backend. So that has then already been arranged. Next, we also want to import use navigate. And that is from React to Router DOM because we want to navigate to the login page after we have completed our logic. And this is going to help us to do that. So to also make sure that we can use use navigate, I'm going to define a new constant called navigate. And this is going to be equal to use navigate. And now we can just refer to the word navigate when we want to go to a different page. Okay, so below here, I'm going to define a new constant and that constant is going to be called logout user. And this is going to make sure that our user is gonna be logged out and that we do all of the stuff that we need to do. Now, after the is sign, we're going to open some round brackets like this. And then we're going to do an arrow function and some squirrely brackets uh, to make sure that our constant is complete. Now, according to the documentation, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make an empty request to the URL that we have defined as logout inside of our backend. So the first thing that we will specify is Axios instance. And then we do a dot post because we want to make a post statement. And then we can define the URL that we want to make the request to. And we need to do that within those backwards commas like this. Now, inside of our backend and then off and then in our URLs, we've just defined that the URL for logging out the user. So we need to go to slash logout like this. So that is exactly what we are going to put in our navbar because we want to log out one user in this first example. So we're going to do logout and then we also add a trailing slash because that's something we always need to do. Then after that, we're going to do a comma and in there we usually specify the information that we want to send with this request between some squirrely brackets. But we've already seen in the documentation that this view accepts only a post request with an empty body. So actually, we don't need to put anything in here because Based on our Axios instance, it knows which token it is about because we uh, attach it to our request and it actually doesn't need any additional information. So just like this, this will already erase the token from the database. So let's then focus on the activities we want to do next. And we're going to put those in a dot then statement. And we open them up with some round brackets like this. And in our then statement, we put in some round brackets again like this. And then we do another arrow function with some squirrely brackets. And now we can define the logic that we want to put in after we have made this logout request. Now, this already takes out the token from our database, but we also want to delete the token from our local storage. And to do that, we can say local storage dot remove item. And then we need to enter the name of the item we want to remove. And in this case, that is equal to token. And you can also see that inside of the front end right here, because the name or the key value of our token is actually called token. And that's the reason that we put that in right there. Now, after we have removed the token from our local storage, we want to navigate to the login page because uh, yeah, the user cannot stay on this page. So we do navigate. And then we just put in a slash like this because our login page is located on the slash. And then the logic is for logging out a user is actually complete. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this constant is being executed when we push the button for logout. So when we go down to the menu item for logout, we can go into the list item button and in there we can do on click. And we can set that equal to logout user. And this should make sure that the logout user function is being executed uh, when we click the button. So let's test it out inside of our front end. You can see that we're currently logged in and our token is equal to FF3911. That's what it starts with. And if we go into our database, you can also see that we have a token entry for that, right? because right here, the token key is actually FF3911. So this is the record that we're talking about. Now, if all goes well, when we click this button, the token entry should be deleted from our database and it should also be deleted from our local storage and we should end up on the login page. So let's see what happens. 
and you can see that it actually works because right now we are in the login page because we've been redirected. You can also see that in our local storage, the token key is no longer there. So it's been deleted from our local storage. And if we go to the database and we refresh it, our entry is gone for that particular record. Now I also want to show you what the change is if we do logout all instead of just logout, because now we've just did the example for one particular token, but it can also be that one user has multiple tokens. So if I now log in with email at email.com and I use testing321 as the password, we should be going to our homepage again. And you can see that we have received a new token. And if we now load the tokens in our database, you will see that the new one appears right here. But we also have two other records for the same user with different tokens. Now, if we use logout all, what should happen is that not only this token is deleted, but it also deletes all of the other tokens for the same user. So it should also delete this record and this one right here. So let's see uh, if we change the endpoint, if that actually happens. So inside of our front end code, we can go up and we can slightly change the logout user statement and we can change it to logout all. Because if we go to the URLs page, you will see that logout all is uh, located right here, which should make sure that all of the entries are being taken care of. And actually, let's make sure that we have a trailing slash on the end there as well. So we've now saved this small change. And now let's see if all of the tokens are being deleted when we change it from logout to logout all. So back in our front end, and we can see that we have the local storage with our token and our database with three different tokens for the same user. And let's click the button and see what happens. So we're being redirected to the login page and also the token value right here is gone. And when we go to our database and I refresh it, you can see that all of the tokens for user one have now disappeared. Uh, and that is the change between logout and logout all. And that is actually all for this video. In this video, I showed you how you can log out users using Django REST Knox. In the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to be focusing a little bit more on form validation for our password forms so that users cannot just put in anything in their passwords. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.